Okay, so this bucket is Canada and it has a little octopus on it and we have a bunch of sand in it. The sand pebbles are Canadians, me and you. Let's pretend I'm Justin and I have a shovel. I want to make sure this bucket is as full as possible so I have as many taxpayers as I can to make sure the bucket is nice and heavy, you know what I mean? Of course, these sand pebbles are not having enough kids. In fact, I believe the birth rate is at around 1.4 per couple. So each couple is having a baby and a half roughly, which means we don't have enough kids to replace the population. So what a guy named Justin should be doing is, you know, fill up the bucket. Make sure it's nice and heavy, it's full enough, and it's fantastic. But what's happening right now is a little bit more exciting than that. This is what we're doing to Canada. Just trying to make sure we have enough immigrants coming to have the bucket very heavy and full. Yeah. Uh, I saw this article that kind of struck a chord with me and I feel like it will probably with you as well. Apparently Canadians are packing their bags and leaving. Is this true? Are we actually packing our bags? So the reason why most people are leaving Canada is because of housing, really. The cost of shelter is so expensive now that an individual who lives in the city of Toronto that has a fantastic job and is making above average income will need to fork over half their income for rent of a small one bedroom condo. This situation is not sustainable. According to this report, the rising key interest rates left many Canadians struggling to afford a home. I don't want to blame my bestie Tiff Macklem, but one of the key players for this housing crisis is interest rates. When we talk about housing, there's this undertone of rich buyers, greedy landlords, real estate agents, and investors pushing average Canadians out of the housing market, pushing prices up artificially. So everyone's praying for the government to show up and save the day by implementing some rules like transparent bidding, subsidizing mortgages. Well, let's unpack this a little bit. Buyers who are buying, they're not rich or greedy. These are average newlyweds, uh, new immigrants who are working really hard, maybe two jobs even, to save up just enough towards that down payment. Couples who are foregoing expensive honeymoons in order to put that money towards their down payment. And the buyer pool is not just a bunch of greedy investors who are pushing average Canadians out of the housing market. Okay, fine. For any new supply to hit the market, new housing supply, we need investors to buy them because new housing supply means people need to buy pre-construction units and those units need to complete and then hit the market eventually. And if you run the numbers, it makes no sense for first-time home buyers to jump in and buy a pre-construction project. In fact, in some cases, it doesn't even make sense for investors to actually buy pre-construction. I'm gonna make a video on that next, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't subscribe, there's a big chance that YouTube won't show you my beautiful face again, so make sure you've subscribed. Also, if you're enjoying, why would this bird decide to chirp right now next to me? Is this even chirping? This is... Also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button. And because you're doing that, I'm going to show you a video of an iguana. Talking about iguanas, with no plans on building sustainable, good infrastructure for immigrants, the government is pretty much bringing 500,000 new immigrants into a Hunger Games situation. It's very nice that the government is bringing immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. I don't know if you can tell. And trust me, it was so much fun coming to Canada back then. I don't see how it is fun now. When I came to Canada, my family was able to buy a single family detached home in Toronto with two minimum weight jobs. I don't know if you can buy a small condo right now with two people working $100,000 jobs. Seriously, let me explain this in a way that an average guy can understand. If you have eight chairs and you wanna play a game of musical chairs, you don't invite 200 people. 
that's not a, it's not gonna be a game so what do people do ronald for example and his wife they're moving to barbados steve is moving to cambodia shane already moved back to the philippines leslie is considering to move to mexico and for the rest of us good luck